A lot are requesting the NSAP 2015 designed using USD and let us uh, begin with analysis of singly reinforced concrete B With the entry of COVID, all schools and review centers were forced to stop their physical operation all shifted to online. Different centers use different advertising tricks and gimmicks that cause more confusion in the minds of reviewers and students rather than help them. But in order to give you clear idea on what you will actually experience in our online review, we created this channel so that you will see, know, and experience firsthand how we do it online. But before we begin our discussion today, please don't forget to visit, like our FB page, Padilla Review Center. The link is found below. Please also subscribe in our YouTube channel. Please don't forget to click the notification bell. Choose all so that you will always be updated and notified regarding all our posts. Also, please don't hesitate and we will appreciate it if you will like every post that we will make. This is for all of you who are reviewing and students of math, science, and engineering, most especially civil engineering. So if you have problems or questions or topics that you want us to discuss, just send it to us through our contact numbers below. So let's begin. A lot are requesting the NSAP 2015 designed using USD and let us uh, begin with analysis of singly reinforced concrete beam using NSAP 2015 by USD method, ultimate strength design method. So let us try to have this problem. A rectangular singly reinforced concrete beam that is 250 with effective depth of 450 but the H total is 520 so this is 520 so if the effective depth is 420 or 450 520 minus 450 meaning the steel cover D prime is 70 now according to this it is reinforced with 416 millimeter diameter bar so our AS is 4 pieces of pi over 4 16 squared or this is going to be 256 pi square millimeters. So in here, it has a simple span of 4 meters. So L is 4 meters. If the simple span is 4 meters, meaning our maximum moment M max is going to be W L squared over, over 8. Okay? And supports a 3.5 meter tributary width slab that is 100 millimeter thick. So if this is the slab 100 mm, center line to center line is 3.5 meters. This is the tributary width that is assigned to this slab. Okay, which is to be supported by the beam. According to the problem, the 100 mm excludes the floor finish. Assume that the slab doesn't contribute to the flexural strength of the beam, meaning we will not consider the T-beam action. So, meaning the slab is just for carrying the superimposed load to be transferred to the beam. Okay? And the beam will transfer it to the column. Now, according to this, we are asked here to find the maximum superimposed live load that the said floor can carry in kilopascal, kilonewton per meter squared if density of concrete is 23.54 kilonewton per cubic meter, the ceiling load is 0.24 kilopascal, drywall is 0.6 kilopascal. Since this is drywall, not concrete wall, this is kilonewton per meter squared of the floor area, not of the wall area. 
So, the floor finish is 1.2 kilopascal and FC prime is 25, FY is 350 megapascal. So, let us solve our W live load. Let us do it. In order for the beam to be safe, I will just analyze this for flexure. To be safe in flexure, using the moment as our parameter for safety, our maximum actual ultimate moment must be less than or equal to MU capacity of the section. Our MU actual is due to load, our MU capacity is solved considering the section of the beam. So this is equal to the maximum moment is WU L squared over 8 must be less than or equal to MU capacity. Our L is 4 meters. So knowing L and knowing this, we can solve WU. So our only problem is find MU capacity of the beam. You get it? So let us solve first our what comprises WU. What comprises WU are the dead load and the live load. Our dead load first, of course, the slab and the beam. So it will be equal to both of them will be density times area in order to make it per linear meter. For the slab, it is 23.54 kilonewton per cubic meter times the area of the slab. Let me include this in the computation, this one, which is part of the beam. So it is 3.5 by 0.1. Kilonewton per meter cube times meter squared kilonewton per meter. For the beam, it is the density or unit weight, 23.54 times area of beam remaining. If this is 520, this is 100, this is 420. So this is times 0.42 by 0.25. So this is kilonewton per meter. The ceiling, for the ceiling, it is assumed to be hanging on the floor. So, that will be distributed per floor area. And that is given as 0.24 kilonewton per meter squared multiplied by the tributary width 3.5. This would be kilonewton per meter. And then, we also have the floor finish. 1.2. So this is the floor finish, 1.2 kilonewton per meter squared. So this is going to be times 3.5 kilonewton per meter. We still have one. Another is the the drywall or movable partition that is 0.6 kilonewton per meter squared per meter square of the floor. So times 3.5. This would be different, no? Because a drywall is being moved from one location to another location to another location depending on the design or the adjustment of the tenant. Okay? Or most of the times, if it is constructed, it would just be, most especially if it is a commercial building, it would be an open space. Then it's up to the tenant to construct the drywall. And that is no longer controlled by the design engineer. So to anticipate that, we will take it based on the given drywall load depending on the materials used. So there is a table found in our NSCP 2015 for schedule of loads. You can try to look at it. Okay. Now, in this particular problem, it is given as 0.6 kilonewton per meter squared of the floor area. So multiply it by 3.5. So we'll have it kilonewton per meter. Aside from this, there are no longer any other 
loads, dead loads that are given. So if we're going to add all of them, you'll get this is 17.8507 kilonewton per meter. So this is your dead load. Okay? Now based from NSCP 2015, the ultimate load WU, there are lots of load combinations. But for this case, only live load and dead load were mentioned. So we will use the load combination for ultimate for live load and dead load. It is 1.2 W dead load plus 1.6 W live load. This is the one being asked in our problem. Do you follow? Okay. So therefore, this is going to be 1.2 times 17.8507 plus 1.6 W live load. This is already kilonewton per meter. So this is still kilo kilopascal. So to make it kilonewton per meter, multiply it by the tributary with 3.5. So what we are going to get there is that WU is equal to 21.42084 plus 1.6 times 3.5 that is 5.6 W live load. So let me call this meanwhile as equation 1. Then this one can be expressed in terms of L. So let me call this equation 2. Once we have WU, we can have WL. And to solve that, we need MU capacity. Let us solve MU capacity of our section. Our beam, the rectangular beam, is 250 by effective depth. 450 okay our AS is this which is composed of 416 mm diameter this is 256 of pi so for this section we have two formulas but for solving MU I will just use the using the raw method okay our MU capacity is equal to phi bd squared fc prime q 1 minus 0 0.59 of q please forgive me for using the old notation for this quantity in the new notation the symbol being used here is w but i will be using the old aci notation because W can be, might be, confused with uniform load. So I'll be using Q for our purpose here. But if you're not convenient or comfortable with Q, you may use W. Okay? Where our Q here is equal to rho Fy over Fc prime. Okay? So let us solve first our rho. Our rho is equal to AS over BD. Our AS is 256 of pi, this one, over BD 250 by 450. So you solve this. This is, this is 7.15 times 10 to the minus 3. I will be saving this in memory B of my calculator. Now, however, before we can apply this formula, before we can use the row, we have to assure that it is within the permissible limit allowed by NSAP. And what is that allowed? If you will read the code, this is on chapter 4 of NSCP 2015. It's a little bit confusing for beginners. So in order to simplify the logic, 
I made this chart. So, it is a graphical interpretation of the code. So, uh, the code is not mine. It is NSEP's. But this chart I did for student understanding purposes. Okay? So, let me call this the Padilla's row chart. The row that you will use in analyzing the beam to be substituted to this formula to get your Q must be in the shaded region. If your row, which is AS over BD, which we computed in this problem as 7.15 times 10 to the minus 3, I suggest you express all rows in terms of 10 to the minus 3 for easier comparison. Okay? So this value must fall within the shaded region. If it is less than four-thirds of rho as per required by flexure, then it is not allowed. You have to do something. It is not acceptable. Okay? If it is existing, if the beam is existing, you have to redefine the occupancy. You have to lighten the load carried by the floor. If it is existing and it is within this region, four-thirds row required and row mean, then it is allowed. Okay? So, you use the actual row if it is within this region. But if your row exceeds row max, you have to use row max. Okay? Row max is taken as 0 0.75 row balance. Row balance is the row when steel will simultaneously reach its yield strength FY with the yield strength of concrete taken by ACI as 0.85 FC prime. FC prime is the cylinder strength that was obtained or that will be obtained for the concrete during its compression test in the universal testing machine or simply a compression machine. Okay? So, this is going to be equal to the raw balance is the ratio of yield stress of concrete 0.85 FC prime over yield strength of, of steel FY multiplied by beta times 600 over 600 plus FY. Okay? But what is our beta? In the formula, we have the FC prime and FY. We just have the beta. The beta is equal to 0.85 minus 0 0.05 over 7 FC prime minus 28. This quantity will be taken as 0 if it is negative. This will be negative if FC prime is less than 28. Right? So if this is less than 28, this will be 0. So rho will be 0.85. But in no way that this value be less than 0.65. So this must be greater than or at least equal to point. 65. So, the minimum value of beta is 0.65, the maximum being 0.85. You get it? So, the formula 0.85 minus 0 0.008 times Fc prime minus 30, it is the formula before 1992. In 1992, this was changed to 30. 0 0.05 over 7, then eventually it was changed to 28. In the NSCP 2015, this is now the prescribed formula. So this is as per ACI or NSCP 2015. You get it? So let us solve our beta in order to solve our, our Romax. But our FC prime in the problem is 25. It is less than 28. So this will be 0. So this is 0.85. Beta is 0.85 when your FC prime is less than 28. 
So, our beta is 0.85. So, we are ready to solve our raw maximum. Let us solve it. So, substituting our raw max is going to be 0.75 times 0.85 FC prime 25 over FY in our problem 350 beta 0.85 times 600 over 600 plus FY. So this is equal to 24.45 times 10 to the minus 3. I express and I advise you to express all rho in terms of times 10 to the minus 3 for easier comparison. Because if it is in decimal, there are some confusions and you might miss it. Okay? Or you might commit an error. So, our rho, take note, is 7.15 and it is less than rho max. Your rho max is here. Our rho is left of that, less than that. So, we are on this inclined plane or inclined line. So let us solve now our raw minimum. As per NSCP 2015, our raw minimum is the bigger of 1.4 over FY and square root of FC prime over 4 FY. So substituting the values 1.4 over 350 while well, this is square root of 25 over 4 times 350 so this is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 3 while well, this is 3.57 times 10 to the minus 3 the bigger of the two is 4 times 10 to the minus 3 Look at our chart. Our raw max as we computed it is 24.45. This is in terms of times 10 to the minus 3. Our raw mean as we computed here is 4 times 10. 4 times 10 to the minus 3. Our raw actual is 7.15. 7.15 is here. Okay? You follow? So it means it is acceptable. It is within the shaded region. Okay? So let us use now 7.15. If it is more than raw max, you have to use raw max. Okay? Because if it is this, you will have to have raw max because what is shaded is raw max. You get it? If it is beyond row balance here, you have to use row max. So in here, you'll have 7.15. So our Q is going to be row FY over FC prime. So this is 7.15 times 10 to the minus 3. I save this, by the way, in... B of my calculator times FY which is 350 over FC prime 25. And this is going to be equal to 0 0.10008. Let me solve this in memory F of my calculator. So I am ready to solve MU capacity. Substituting to this MU capacity formula, let me call this equation 3. So, substitute this to equation 3. So, I will have here MU capacity is going to be equal to phi. The phi for flexure is 0.9. So, phi is a constant for flexure 0.9. For shear, that is 0.85. For Axial bearing, it would be dependent on the nature of stir ups or spiral. Okay? 0.95 BD squared RB is 250, RD is 450 squared, FC prime, which is 25. I'm just substituting to this formula. Times Q, RQ is this one, right? 
So this is going to be equal to 0 0.100 Zero 08 there are three zeros point one zero 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 eight times one minus zero point fifty nine times zero point one zero 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 eight okay you calculate this and what you will get here is one oh seven point twenty seven times ten to the six newton millimeters 10 to the 6 newton millimeters is the same as kilonewton meter. So this is 107.27 kilonewton meter. 1000 newton, 1000 millimeters, 1000, 1000, 10 to the 6. So that's why 10 to the 6 newton millimeter is 1 kilonewton meter. Okay? So, this is the MU capacity. Substitute this now in equation 2. So, substituting to equation 2, we will have WU L squared, that is 4 squared over 8, must be less than or equal to MU capacity 107.27. We will be able to get WU here and WU must be less than or equal to 53.635 but WU from equation to equation 1 this one is 21.42084 plus 5.6 W live load must be less than equal to 53.635. So, computing it, so W live load must be less than or equal to 5.7525 kilopascal. Okay? So, the WL here is already expressed in kilopascal it became kilonewton per meter when we multiplied it by the tributary width of 3.5. So this is the maximum live load that it can carry. You follow? So I hope with our series in RCD, you are learning a lot from us or from me, and you are learning the principles, fundamentals of RCD without focusing much on new formulas. So, I am inviting you to enroll in our RCD program. It is composed of RCD1 and RCD2. So, the program is composed of 15, at least 15 modules each. Each module is equivalent to 4 hours of physical teaching. So, meaning, if there are 30 modules for total for RCD1 and RCD2, that is equivalent to 30 times 4 hours, 120 teaching hours physically or in classroom, it is classroom hours. In classroom, there are lots of wasted time, right? Copying, erasing, if there is an error in computation, repeating it. So it means it's more than that. So assuming you are hiring a tutor for 600 per hour, 600 times 100 20, that would be 72,000. But in our program, you will be paying only 1,000 for RCD1, 1,000 for RCD2. So that is only 2,000 instead of 72,000, a savings of 70,000. <laughs> wow, right? Okay. And the point is, with modesty set aside, your instructor will be Engineer Perfecto Padilla. That's yours truly. With modesty set aside, I've been in this profession of teaching the review, teaching this subject for 32 years. Okay? So, you combine all those years of experience, that is what you are getting by attending, enrolling, subscribing to our RCD program. And there is more 
to it because this is our introductory program you will be getting 50% discount if you enroll in both of the programs meaning instead of paying 2000 for the two programs RCD1 and RCD2 you will be paying only 1000 and you can take advantage of it while the discount the promo is on board meaning effective so what are you waiting now enroll now so in order to enroll click the button below padilla review center enroll then click it and you will be guided by our website so if you have any other more question our numbers are down in the link below so just text us just call us so that we can accommodate whatever question or inquiry you may have so 